Hey everybody, welcome to my channel or welcome back if hopefully you've been here before. My name is Heather and we do full real-time sewing tutorials here on our channel. I learned how to sew by watching other YouTubers and so I felt like I really wanted to pay it forward. So this is what we're doing. We typically will switch up camera angles, we'll switch up feet on our machine, we'll mess up sometimes. <laughs> but we always keep going. So thanks for joining me. Today we're doing something super fun. If you've watched me before, you know I like to take some really popular patterns and do them all in jelly vinyl. Jelly? Is it vinyl? In jelly. Because, I don't know, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. Today we're doing the Clea Sling by Unicats. Handmade. I might say that wrong. But I'm going to link the pattern and I'm going to link all of our materials in the description box below. So make sure you expand that description box if you have a question because I often put a big good old amount of information down there for you. Um, and then of course if there's something down there that you can't find or there's something that you're looking for that's not down there, feel free to ask me. I love being able to answer questions and be helpful. We are making the small size. Oh yeah. In all jelly vinyl. So I was recently with my family at the parks in Florida and we went on this super fun ride and got soaked. I mean soaked. And I, I really only like to take, I'll put this on for you really quick while we're talking. I really only like to take a very small bag to the parks one that I can just sort of, you know, pop, pop right here, easy for me to get into. And so I have that. I've made it for myself. It's vinyl. It's like a, I'm going to do it actually um, and offer the dimensions, things like that to everybody probably here in just a little, little bit later this month or October. Um, I haven't figured that out yet, but I, it, it works great and it's vinyl. So it's also waterproof, but we went on this raft and it, we might as well have been in bathing suits or in a torrential downpour <laughs> or it was so fun, but we got soaked and I was like, man, I need to make like a hip bag or a sling bag that will fit, you know, right here where I like it. That is out of jelly vinyl because like water's just going to right off of it. No problems. And so that's how this came to me. I was like, ah, I know just the pattern that will be perfect for that. I love this shape of it. It's so fun. Uh, so we'll get into our materials. Okay. And then we'll take it over to the sewing machine. It's fun and it's fast. We're not doing a lining. And so anytime you make a pattern out of, um, jelly, you're, you're skipping a bunch of steps that are in the pattern. This, this bag is a really fast make anyways, but making it with no interior is even faster and so fun. Uh, so let's get into it and, uh, I'll see you on the other side. All right. So since we're going unlined, we don't have a ton of materials. We do have a number five zipper tape. We're doing rainbow coils here. Um, and I just cut it longer than what we need it. That's how I prefer to do zippers, but there are measurements in the pattern for it. Number five zipper pull. All of our hardware today came from Waywac and we're going rainbow. We're just, we're sticking with rainbow here. <laughs> Everything's super colorful. So we're doing that. Um, we have some rainbow webbing and this is from Wonderground Fabrics. We are doing a custom bag tag that I will put on the bag before we, uh, I'm going to do this before we sew together, basically. Uh, you've seen me put these on a thousand times. This is a cork. It is custom. Now, the way that Heartwood and Hide works, where we get this from, is you get on basically a list, um, and they'll help you design your bag tags, your size, and things like that. And once you're on their list and they get to you, you can reorder at any time, so... Once you make it through that initial wait, it's really, uh, really super easy. I love these. They come in so many colors, as you'll notice, because we're always using them in different colors. This is a nice little minty cork that I thought would be cute today. We have our strap anchor piece in our, oh, sorry guys, strap anchor piece in our 
uh, pink. This is like a ballet pink. Um, and this is from Oh So Pretty Custom Vinyl. That's a jelly. Our accent piece is also from Oh So Pretty in that same ballet pink. And our main pieces today, this is our bottom, and then this is our back and our top, are this fabulous matte printed jelly vinyl from Endo Love Creations. You see what it says in the butterflies? We're supposed to change. So I thought it was perfect for our little transition to fall. We're still using some bright summery colors, but it, there's fall leaves, these beautiful butterflies, and I've been dying to make something with this. So I thought this was perfect. And then the other thing we have over here is our one inch wide elastic binding. You guys, I got these in like a 10 yard roll from Amazon. I will link these below also. Um, I super struggled with elastic until I got these. So I'm going to be honest, total game changer. Uh, there is just a tidbit of binding. You just have to bind the bottom curve. And so this elastic is perfect because you can maneuver it around the curves, as you'll see when we sew, really, really easily. And um, it's not going to be hard. It's going to look amazing. And this is going to go super fast, you guys, because we're bypassing all of the lining, all of the extra pockets. We're just making the bag. So let's get to it. All right, so we're over here at the machine, which as always is a Juki TL2010Q. We're sewing with Tex 35 weight polyester thread from Wizardry Stitchery. And I do have my tank foot for high shank machines on. I got this at Soulful Therapy. A lot of people ask me and I'm always forgetting to sort of just put it out there. This is, it's, it's basically like what it says. It's a tank, um, but it is not as big as the walking foot um, for this machine, which let me just grab really quick for you, is this. It still works really well, of course, it's a walking foot, but this back piece makes it really, really difficult because it's so large to sort of get around curves or anything like that. It's totally doable. It just, it's harder. So this foot basically mimics what a walking foot would do for this machine, but with less space. So that's what we're using today. And we're using that because jelly's not difficult to sew with, but sometimes um, if you don't have a foot that's sort of going to walk your material through the jelly, if it's like humid in your house and it's been pretty humid in here, it will like make this sound that sounds like it's sticking and it's having a hard time getting over your metal plate. So we're just going to use the, um, the tank foot today and we're going to start with our anchor pieces, uh, anchor piece. We have taken our main panel and, um, we've made a mark. I think you can see it per the instructions. And so there are three sizes to this. We're doing the small and all of the measurements for all three sizes are in the pattern, which I think is so helpful. It's awesome to be able to scale a pattern on your own, but then there are some things that you're probably having to figure out, which is totally fine, but I love when a pattern um, just makes it really easy for you to go ahead and put the measurements per the size that you're printing your pattern pieces for. So we have done that here. Now we also have to take our anchor strip and you can draw a line down the center. Jelly, as soon as I were to touch this line, it's going to start to move because it never really dries. And so we haven't drawn a center line. We're just going to sort of, as we go, make a little crease for ourselves. And um, we're going to work with it sort of one section at a time here. Uh, and what we're doing is in, we're folding both edges to the middle. At sort of an equal distance. And you can use tape here. Um, I just, again, I don't think it's the easiest material to tape. So we're just going to use clips. I have done this with clips before. Um, and it's fine. It's a little more uh, work, obviously, because you're like clipping and then you're going to have to take the clips off. But it's okay. At least it won't unstick on us or anything like that. Thank you. 
And this technique is really cool for making the anchor and something you could use on other bags if you're like self-drafting, little sling bag, crossbody, fanny packs. Highly recommend learning some new strap anchor ways. And so once you get started, it's pretty simple to just keep going. I'm just going to recenter and make sure I'm still where I need to be. And it's that easy. We are gonna um, put down our edges as well. Just gonna turn this over. It looks pretty good. So here on our end pieces, we are also folding those in. Now we're gonna go down both sides at a quarter inch. So we're not doing the eighth of an inch right here on the edge. We're gonna do a quarter inch all the way down on both sides. I'm just readjusting some of my other side clips as I need to. So there's our one side and we'll go ahead and do our other side.
and there we go. So it's sewn down, sewn together. We're just going to trim our excess threads. We don't want anything to sort of get in our way. And I always burn the ends of our threads. Okay, all right. Now we need to mark the center. of our piece and we're just going to use the air erasing marker like I said this will come off really easily and then on the wrong side we need to mark three inches in from each side And I'm just using an air erasing marker here to get them in packs. And but see how quickly our our mark sort of vanishes. All right. So what we're going to do now is put on some double sided tape, and we want a piece long enough that extends about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter past our marks on the back side and we're putting it right in the middle just being careful not to run our finger over those marks okay. we're going to remove our tape going to double check. I'm going to redraw our center marking quickly so we don't lose it. All right, then we're going to take our D-ring connectors and we're going to thread the wrong side to the wrong side on each side. And then we're folding over, I'll do that one in a second, we're folding over our end to that three inch mark that we made, like so. And we're gonna put some clippies too, just to hold this jelly to that tape. But see how that sort of indented side makes it so that you're not ever going to see the end. It's totally finished. So then we'll do the same thing over here. And that's why you want that double sided tape to extend over your line. Okay, we'll just again some clippies. All right, so now what we need, we need those center markings because we're gonna line it with the center. Of our line and the top edge. And we're just going to stick that down, making sure we stay in line, like so. So this is going to become our strap anchor. Now we need to draw a few more lines here. Okay. 
I'm going to take out the clippies in hopes that we're stuck together. I'll leave the ends for now. Now we just need to draw a mark one inch from our folded edge of this strap anchor. on both sides. So a lot of what you're doing for this bag and jelly is prep work. All right, so we have our marks one inch from both sides. And what we're gonna do now is we are gonna sew up and then we're going to sew our eighth of an inch all the way across, down, an eighth of an inch all the way across the bottom. And that will complete our box and make it so that our anchor is attached to our main body panel piece. Easy breezy. Okay, and now we're gonna take out our clippies here on the end because we don't need them anymore. We wanna make sure that we stay aligned with those lines. Okay, we're gonna pop our needle down. You can hear my jelly is sticking. Which is totally fine. It's not really, it just sounds like it's <laughs> struggling. I chose to backstitch, but you don't have to. You can totally pull your threads. So I, right here, something happened in this corner. So I'm just gonna go back through. I'll do that off camera. I'll cut these and then the way that you fix skipped stitches here, and this I just need to dehumidify a little bit. The way you uh, fix skip stitches is you go back through where you started a little bit and then you're gonna come up and then go back down. So you're just going through the same holes and it won't look like anything is off or missing or anything like that. But even from the back on the inside, it's gonna look pretty nice. You're not gonna notice because we're using that white thread. Since there's no lining, that is something to think about. So we're gonna fix this and then we'll come back and we're, we're pretty much, this was the most difficult part of the bag when you're doing it in jelly. So, um, I'll fix these and then we do rivet this down but not yet because you need these to be able to move away from the sides as you're sort of stitching them together. So we are going to rivet but not until later. All right, we're all fixed. So now we're moving on to installing our zipper. So we're taking our zipper, we're putting it face side down. 
So right side to the right side of our exterior and you can see on your pattern piece that it has this little notch and so that's that's where our zipper goes. So we're just going to clip. You could staple here if you want. It is not a small curve so I am not going to staple. I think we'll be okay here. Just go around the curve all the way. Clipping again right side to right side. Just like so. So we're just clipped to these inner edges here. We're going to start down here. That's why we're not clipped. And we're going to sew our zipper on. Again, zipper tape is wrong side down. Our bag is right side up. So our right sides are together. Just want to make sure we follow that curve evenly. And try to keep the same seam allowance here. Now I'm going to grab my peeking shears from my drawer full of things over here really quickly. If I can grab them. Need some organization. Actually we won't be able to use them because the seam allowance is not big enough. But in the pattern they have you cutting sort of triangles. I don't like to cut through zipper tape. I just like, I don't like it. Um, so, with that said, let's fold this down and see how it does. I think we'll be okay without cutting. All right, with that said, the next step for us will be to top stitch our zipper tape underneath our front panel. So that will be pushing your jelly and your tape down underneath your panel. will give us a nice crisp top because this is going to be the top of our bag. So as we go, we will just take our time here, make sure everything is where we want it to be. You don't want your zipper tape and jelly to be underneath your zipper. So that's really the big thing. You just want to sort of keep it even 
Make sure that you're going around the curve, you're pulling everything away, and then you'll get a nice top stitch. And so that just means you're taking your time to sort of readjust. Make sure things stay where you want them to. This will be a part of the bag that is very noticeable. we go top stitch complete like so and it came out great so I know that if we go much further we're gonna end up playing uh, roulette with our bobbin um, and I don't want to do that today so I'm gonna hop off super quick as I fix the bobbin I'm just gonna cut off some of our excess tape here first I'm gonna fix the bobbin and then we will come back and do the final piece of our panel, combine our zippers, and then we're all set. All right guys, I fit. I checked it, we're not as close as I thought we were. So we're gonna keep going for now. All right, so this is our accent piece and then this is our bottom. And so what you're doing with these is you're gonna take your excess piece or your bottom piece and you're going to lay it right side up and you'll notice that your accent piece has a longer side and a shorter side so the shorter side is what we want to align with our bottom piece and so to do that there is no right or wrong sides with this unprinted jelly so we're just going to put it on top flip it down we're going to line up our edges here and you'll notice that they have the same marking. We're gonna clip. And we're gonna clip all the way down. And then your other side should line up perfectly as well. And then we're gonna sew these together following the seam allowance in the pattern. trim and then we want to do a top stitch so we're folding everything underneath our accent panel here So that means as it's laying flat, you're going to push up 
and that will leave everything behind the accent panel. If you were to put it behind your bottom panel, you can see here that there is just that bump out, so you know you need it to go underneath your accent panel. Okay, so we're again here, just gonna take our time. We're gonna top stitch all the way down. completed now we're ready to add the zipper and before we do that we are actually going to now switch out what we're doing with our bobbin alrighty we're back with the fresh bobbin for real this time so now what we're going to do is pull apart our zipper tape which I know if you've never done this before it can be super scary but it will be okay all right, so we pulled apart our zipper tape, and what we're going to do now is we want our zipper to be right side down, okay, on the top of our accent panel. And we're just gonna clip it I'm just going to clip with a little more over here. You can mark the centers of your zipper first and that will give you a little bit less of a guessing game. But we should align pretty correctly and if not we'll just trim down the zipper tape if need be and now we're going to sew on our zipper again our zipper is right side down and our panel is right side up We want to once again put everything that's behind behind our panel and not our zipper and we're gonna top stitch so we're just finger pressing down so this is what the back side looks like okay And this is just a traditional top stitch. how jelly top stitches it's so cute all right I'm just trimming threads there is no lining so technically you'll see these and you just want to make sure that 
anything that's anything here on the edges we'll, we will cover with that elastic binding so I'm not super concerned all right here we go we're gonna put our zipper pull on and all the way off here and so we're just taking our zipper tape and we're aligning the edges, the coils of your zipper tape. So we wanted to put this all together before we actually put the pull on for good because um, we want to make sure that everything lines up with each other. And it looks like it does pretty well. So we are going to, I want my, I'm just checking, <laughs> quiet, because I'm looking, <laughs> make sure we line up. So I am, I want my pull to be put on, on the right hand side, because when it's closed, I want it to be closed over on the left and open to the right. And so I'm just gonna reopen the right hand side and I'm going to reinstall the pull, and this time I'm not going to pull it all the way through. Sometimes zipper pulls can be tricky, and sometimes they go super easy. I think it's the pull, not the person. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There we go. We're on. We're going to leave it in the middle and let it be. And now what we're going to do is we're basically on to final construction. So we're going to turn our bag so that it is wrong side out. carefully because we don't want our zipper tape to come undone and we're just gonna we're gonna line ourselves up I need to find the center of our bottom piece just with a little snip so we're going to align our centers And for this, I am going to switch out to the walking foot. Nothing here is going to get in our way with that foot. And it is definitely the best foot that we have. So, and you want your zipper tape to be flat. Okay. So we'll just do a clip up here. We will trim down our zipper tape, just not quite yet. Okay, same thing over here. I'm gonna finish clipping and switch out to our walking foot, and then we'll come back together and uh, finish sewing this beauty up. Okay, so our walking foot is on. One thing we wanna be mindful of is we do have that extension of our D-ring, and the reason we didn't put our uh, rivets in yet is because we need to just reach in there and push those D-ring connectors back and ensure that they stay out of our way. We don't wanna to have to sew 
anywhere near them and so that box is smaller than the extensions and we don't put the rivets in just yet because we need to make sure that we can sew everything down. So now that we have that taken care of, we are just going to sew everything together at a quarter inch seam allowance making sure our zipper tape is, stays flat. Again, just making sure we keep that good corner all the way around. our screwdriver here. Keep everything where it's supposed to be. And as we come up to this other side, keep the seam allowance in check. Our D-ring connector got a little bit in our way over here. I could feel that it was doing it and so we're just going to just go back around right here to make sure that everything is basically where we want it to be. It pushed our foot a little bit. do it and so now besides the binding our bag is done so we're gonna cut off our extra We're gonna grab our binding. We're just going to seal our zipper tape. We don't want it to be coming undone. Okay. Now we're gonna take our elastic binding here and you'll never see this top corner here so we're just gonna extend our elastic above the top corner. We'll cut it off when we're done um, and then we'll just basically seal with a lighter but you'll never see it because it's gonna be up in that top corner. So we're just going to put a clip and then with elastic, if you've never used it, it does have this center ridge mark and that shows you where uh, you want your seam to be underneath. And then you just do a gentle pull, so we're not like fully elastizing the elastic, but enough so that it's not uh, like hanging there. And you see how, I'll show you in one second a little bit better, but you see how nicely it goes around the corner here because it has that stretch sort of just naturally built into it. So it's perfect for curves. 
and I will tell you it took me a long time to come around to elastic because I was I was really struggling for quite some time so if you're not there yet that's okay I do think this elastic has been the easiest to use so far and so that's been just really important for me I'm gonna leave this extended here um, just so that I make sure I get that that stretch on the end that I want and then we'll cut it off afterwards okay now we just sew on as we would any other binding and I just use a seam allowance slightly smaller than how we finished the bag Again, just moving that connector out of the way. All right, see how easy that is? And look at how nice it looks. Just totally finished. You can't see any of our ed raw edges. You can still see our raw edges here, but that's not a big deal. We're just gonna trim up our elastic up here. And we'll take off our elastic on this side. Okay. And we'll do a slight seal. Although these will be sealed inside our bag, just as they are because of because it's up there in the corner. We're not we don't have to worry about it. We don't gotta worry. Alright. Now we can turn our bag. And this jelly is gonna stick to itself. <laughs> so don't worry. We'll push out our corners. push out our curve. We'll finish sort of forming our bag in a minute. What we want to do at this time is install our rivets. And we're going to install them just right here. So right in the center, we'll take our air erasing marker again. And we're just going right in the middle of the end and our stitch line there. We'll do the same thing on this side, right in the center. Okay, so we're going to pop some holes in there and then we'll put rivets in it at the rivet press. The other thing that we're going to do at the press is there is instructions for making your strap in the uh, pattern as well. And let me just show you the rivets. We're using rainbow rivets from Cam Snaps, which I did not include in our materials. So there they are. Um, so yeah, there are instructions for making the strap, including the length. So we're just gonna cut this to length and uh, I'm not gonna walk you through the whole steps of making the strap, but I will tell you that what I do first to make a strap is secure the one side to the slider okay um, and I'm gonna do that with rivets I'm not a huge fan of sewing the uh, straps I like to use rivets and so I'll connect that with a rivet and then you basically add your swivel hook 
and then you pop the end back up through the wrong side and over the right side and you add your second swivel hook and that's what makes it adjustable. I have made straps on videos before um, and there are a lot of people who make videos just on those little tidbits and so I'm not going to include that because I'm going to make this on the rivet machine while I do the rivets for the back. So I'm going to do that and then finish turning out our bag here. You can see we still have to turn around the corners and really smush those out and then we'll go to the finish table and take a look at it. All right you guys, see how fast that was? So fun. When you buy the pattern you'll see that there's all kinds of instructions. This is made typically as a lined bag. And so there's pages and pages about the extra pockets and the inside and the instructions are so clear and it is really an easy make whether you make it like I did today online with jelly or clear even if you wanted to go that route um, or if you make it with the full exterior and interior it's going to be fast both ways you do it. But here we go. We just have to, you got to like smush, you know, and so I'm still working on the, the smush of it to give it like that shape but you can see when we open it you can see our binding in there and our corners that just go right up so we don't have to worry about the ends you can see our strap through our vinyl and you can't see the threads or anything like that so it doesn't look unfinished in any way and that's that's one of the reasons I really like making bags like this and we get our back so see we have our rivets in here just and that's just some extra stability and it keeps our um, d-ring connectors right here at the sides which we could not have done um, previous because we needed to sew that up and then we have our strap with our rivets just as I showed you we were going to do and so we have adjustable, I'm going to make this just a little bigger and back up for you. So it's just like, it's, I love being able to just put my hand and like know that my bag is here. We have it opening to this side. This is the way that I wear it. If you wear it on the other side, you'd want your zipper to open over here and you just like go in there, grab your sunscreen, your cell phone, your wallet, whatever it is. And it's here. And if you're like, me and this, I, you know, take these to parks, amusement parks and rides and stuff like that. And you're like me and you do that. It's thin enough that you don't have to like leave it in a bin or a locker or whatever. You can just like, it just smushes, you know, like right there underneath your, your bits. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but it's right there. Um, I have made this with lining and I love it both ways. I really do. Um, this is going to be so great for like, like if you're just out and about and maybe you're going to get caught in a rainstorm <laughs> or something like that, you know, nothing inside is going to get damaged. And how cute. Look at our butterfly right here in the front. <sighs> so cool. So I hope that you enjoyed today. Um, I love making bags out of printed jelly. I think it's just, it's such a cool way to take a bag and do something just a little bit different while also following the pattern from the pattern designer and it's written perfectly this again it's a small size they have a medium and a large I've never actually made the large I made the medium before um, it's so it's a great size the large is gonna fit a good amount of things it's gonna fit you still right there but much bigger and you know it could even be an everyday bag for you um, or a bag that you put inside like a tote bag if you go to work and have a lot of bags um, I'm like the bag lady at, at work and so it's nice to be able to have something with like your cards anything like that, that you can just like slip inside of a bigger bag and this is definitely that all right well I hope you enjoyed today I really did these are some of my favorite things to make these jelly vinyl goodies and I um, I hope you'll give it a try. If you haven't bought this pattern, I definitely recommend you do so. It is so well written and you're going to be amazed at how fast it comes together. If you bought it and never tried it in jelly vinyl, I seriously suggest you do that too because it's such a fun way to make it a little bit different. I will see you all so soon and I'm so thankful for you. Thanks for joining. Catch you soon.